Hello everyone, welcome back to the next session of the design of combined footing. To recall the previous session, we have arrived at the design conclusion that is analysis part until the BMD and SFD for the combined footing both along longitudinal direction and transverse direction of the combined RCC rectangular footing. So, let us begin further. We have the summary of the analysis as shown on the board where the bending moment at A is 0, at B is 24.5 kilo Newton meter which is sagging and at the maximum bending moment is 60 kilo Newton meter and at exactly at C the bending moment is 50.80 kilo Newton meter. So, now let us see how to go about in designing the RCC combined footing for its bending and shear. So, now having given this the transverse bending moment is 39.36. So, having known that these values what we have arrived at is the service actions and moments that is service load and service moments. So, the ultimate moment and the ultimate loads is to be factored with the load. So, which is equal to 1.5. So, hence the ultimate moment at A is 0 and at B is 24.5 kilo Newton into 1.5 which is leading to 36.75 kilo Newton meter. Similarly, the maximum ultimate moment is 60 into 1.5 which is 90 kilo Newton meter and the ultimate moment at point C is 76.2 kilo Newton meter and at D it is 0 and the transverse ultimate moment is 59.04 kilo Newton meter which is a sagging bending moment. So, hence with this we can conclude that the maximum ultimate bending moment is the hogging moment that is happening exactly at this location which is equal to 60 into 1.5 that is 90 kilo Newton meter. So, now with this calculation of ultimate design moments. So, let us start the designing of the reinforcement for the given RCC slab type combined footing. So, now to design for the given concrete that is F C K is equal to 15 kilo Newton, Newton per mm square and F Y is 4 on 5 Newton per mm square for the design ultimate moment as 90 kilo Newton meter. So, referring to IS 456 of Indian standard code and in particularly annexure G that is G 1.1 C, we have the ultimate limiting moment equation given in annexure G 1.1 C which is equal to 0.36 times of x u max by d multiplied by 1.0.42 into x u max by d multiplied by b into d square into f c k. So, with this equation we can equate the ultimate moment to the design ultimate moment that is m u max and determine what exactly is the effective depth of the slab required for a limiting moment which is equal to the ultimate moment of 90 kilo Newton meter. So, equating to this we get 19 to 10 to the power of 6 is what we have the numbers which is been converted from kilo Newton meter to Newton millimeters, Newton millimeters because what we have in our units for F C K is Newton per mm square. So, hence expressing all the units in terms of millimeters and Newtons. 
So, we do have the equation 90 into 10 to the power of 6 is equal to 0 0.138 FCKB into D square, where 0 0.138 FC 138 is a constant, so that is referred to the XU by D value in our IS456. So, for XU max by D value, applying that value and multiplying with these constants of 1 minus 4.42 into XU max by D, we arrive at 0.138 as the constant, that is moment resistant constant. So, with this, D required can be identified as equal to square root of 90 into 10 to the power of 6 divided by 0 0.138 into 15 into 1600, where 15 is the FCK of the concrete and 1600 is the value of B. B is the width of the combined footing. So, hence with this, D required is calculated as 164.85 millimeters. So, now having known D required is 164.85, let us round it off to 170 millimeters to eliminate the decimal of 0.85. So, hence the overall depth capital D required is effective depth plus effective cover, effective cover for the concrete that is this value. So, considering effective cover of 50 millimeters, 50 millimeters 170 plus 50 is leading to 220 millimeters. So, with this the overall depth of the concrete required for the given combined footing for the analyzed structural behavior is 220 millimeters overall depth which is represented here. So now once the depth of footing is fixed, we can calculate what exactly is the reinforcement required for various critical zones that is zone number 1, 2 and 3. So hence AST1, AST2 required and AST3 required can be identified based on the design parameters worked out so far. So, having fixed D is equal to 220 millimeters using the same annexure, the equation given for identifying the reinforcement AST expressed in terms of movement resisting equation is 0 0.87 Fy AST D into 1 minus AST into Fy divided by B multiplied by D into FCK. So, hence in this equation, we know what is the bending moment at location 1, location 1 to define what is AST1 and we know what is B, D, FCK and FY. So, the only unknown is AST1. So, hence AST1 is calculated as 747 millimeter square, which is again compared with AST minimum. So, AST minimum according to IS 456 is worked out as 423 millimeter square. So, therefore, comparing these two, it is the required is greater than the AST minimum. So, hence AST which is required is not based on the minimum, whereas it is based on the actual design calculations. So, hence AST has to be provided based on the AST design and based on this we can 
calculate the spacing of the bars and finally the percentage of steel that is provided can be ascertained based on the actual value. So now let us go to location 2. So location 2 we have the same design equation so that is used and Fy is again the same Fck is also the constant B is constant D is constant and Mu2 bending moment at location number is the only variable that is being changed from MU1 to MU2 and because of this variation the HT required is at location 2 is 1549 millimeter square which is again greater than 423 millimeters that is HT minimum. So accordingly HT provided is fixed as 1000 549 millimeter square and hence based on the spacing that we provide we can define what is the PT2 provide that is percentage of tension steel provided which is working out to be 0 0.44 percentage. So now let us move on to location 3. So now again using the same equation MU3 is again changing from location 1, 2 and 3 the bending moment is a maximum which is 90 kilo Newton meter. So based on this we have AS3 as the maximum uh, reinforcement that is required which is equal to 1843 millimeter square which is again greater than AST minimum. So therefore the provide reinforcement is should be 1843 millimeter square. So equivalent percentage of steel based on this figure is going to be 0 0.523 percentage. So with this we have arrived at the three critical reinforcement design and its percentage calculations which has to be very very important for our next check in case of the shear at those three critical sections. So now to summarize, so AST1 is 747 millimeter square, AST2 is 1549 millimeter square and AST3 is 1843 millimeter square whereas AST minimum is 423 millimeter square which is calculated based on the minimum reinforcement required for the slab that is 0.12 percentage of the gross cross sectional area of the slab which is working out to be 423 millimeter square. So now we are moving from shear design sorry from bending moment design to shear check. So now as it is conveyed in the introductory part of this design section slabs are generally checked for shear for the safety against shear failure whereas we are not going to design for shear as a shear reinforcement. So hence let us check for shear the first check is one way shear check. So we have the effective depth of the concrete in the combined footing is arrived at 170 millimeters. The overall depth is 170 plus 50 that is 220 millimeters and since the spacing S2 is greater than S1 so hence the section at this particular location that is S2 location will be fetching the longest width of the concrete footing which will be subjected to shear failure. So that is as displayed here. So section 2 2 will be critical because S1 will be towards this particular distance which is lesser dimension compared to S2 which is equal to 400 millimeter square. So hence 
we are directly switching on to the critical section 2 2 and we are not evaluating section 1 1 because of identifying the parameter that the distance here if you if I measure D effective depth D which is equal to 170 meters so this S1 is equal to 0.5 minus 0.23 divided by 2 minus of 0 0.17. So, 0 0.5 minus 0.23 divided by 2 minus 0 0.17 is definitely lesser than 400 millimeters. So, hence, so in our design we are concluding that S1 section leads to less shear stress whereas S2 section leads to greater shear stress. So therefore, directly we are pitching into section 22 for our design check in case of one way shear. So hence the critical section is exactly as shown in this figure 22. So now this hatchet portion is the portion of the concrete which is free to move upwards due to the upward soil pressure and exactly here the concrete is going to shear off. So hence at this critical section we are defining what is the design shear strength of the concrete for the provided reinforcement, design reinforcement. So I am comparing that with the nominal shear stress. So if the nominal shear stress is lesser than the design shear stress then the concrete will be safe without shear reinforcement and it will never fail in shear criteria. So let us see in numericals what exactly is the value for nominal shear stress as well as with the design shear stress. So now the nominal shear force at critical section 2 2 is as shown in the design calculation that is 196 into 0 0.4 where 0 0.4 is this dimension. So 192 or 196 sorry 196 is the design upward shear force that is acting magnitude which is UDL multiplied by the distance gives the total force acting upwards at the critical section which is 78.4 kilo Newton acting upwards. So this is the force which is shearing of the concrete. So now the shear stress due to this nominal force is called as nominal shear stress that is tau V value is what we need to determine. So from clause 40.1 of IS 456 is given as V tau V is equal to V U not 2 whereas 2 represents the critical section 2 divided by B into D whereas B D into D is the critical cross section dimensions B into D where B is 1600 millimeters and D is effective depth that is 170 millimeters. So with this we have arrived at the nominal shear stress tau V value is equal to 0 0.43 Newton per millimeter square for the given nominal shear force of 78.4 kilo Newton. So which is based on the service loads and converting that to the load factor that is 1.5 we arrive at tau V u value. So that is 0.432 Newton per mm square. So now let us see what is the design shear stress of the concrete at section 2 2. So the design shear stress of concrete at the same critical section is given by tau c value which is arrived at based on table number 19 of IS 456 2000. So hence in table number 
19 of IS 456-2000, we could see the percentage of steel 100 into AS by D values which is given on one single column of the particular table number 19 and having known this variation of the different percentages of steel, the tau C value for the given specific grade of concrete, the grade of concrete may be M15, M20, M25 ranges depending upon the material strength what we are using in our design. So, hence let us see in our design what is tau C value. So, for the PT2 provided exactly at section 22, the percentage of steel is 0.523 value. So, for the given 0.523 percentage of steel based on table number 19, so we have the design shear stress that has to be calculated based on the linear interpolation between the two values that is 0.46 and 0.54. So, we have PT provided is equal to 0 0.523 which is in between 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. So, hence if I linearly interpolate between these two values and identify what is the value of Y, the final tau C value is worked out as 0 0.46 plus Y value. So, what is Y value? Y value is calculated as equal to 0 0.0073 Newton per mm square. So, that is this. So, hence tau C value now is equal to 0 0.46 plus 0 0.0073 which is leading to the total value of tau C is equal to 0. 4673 Newton per mm square. So, now this tau C value is much much greater than tau V value what we have calculated it as 0 0.432 Newton per mm square. So, since this value is greater than tau V value, now my concrete strength of 15 M15 grade is sufficient enough to sustain the shear stresses coming over due to the applied loading conditions. So, hence it will never fail without having even the shear reinforcement. So, hence the shear check is ok and it is safe. So, with this we end up the check for one way shear that is along the longitudinal direction. So, there is tau C is greater than or equal to tau V value. So, hence the depth whatever we have provided is sufficiently enough to sustain the shear stresses that has to carry without shear reinforcement. So, now let us move on to the design check for shear which is the case of two directional shear which is called as two way shear or even it is called as punching shear. So, it is also called as punching shear, it is also called as punching shear. So, as we know that in plan you can see this is a critical path it is going to punch on the concrete due to the force coming on the column number 2. So, since column number 2 is subjected to the highest magnitude, so we consider column number 2 for our design check. So, whereas column number 1 is subjected to lesser magnitude of load compared to column number 2, so hence we are not considering this, we are directly getting into the maximum load magnitude location for our two way shear check that is punching shear check. So, now we have decided that the critical section will be at column load which is maximum. So, hence this is what we have. So, how to identify the critical path in the location? 
So, it is to measure the distance effective depth divided by 2 on all the four sides of the column number 2 and draw the line joining this path. So, this becomes the critical section in both the directions both x and transverse direction. So, where d is the effective depth of concrete that is 170 millimeters on all these directions. So, 170 divided by 2 is 85 millimeters. So, hence if I add 85 on all these directions and I will get B naught as 400 85 plus 230 plus 85. Similarly, on this direction 85 plus 300 plus 85. So, which is equal to 470. So, hence the total rectangle shape is of length 470 by 400 is the critical path dimension for checking the two way shear. So, now let us arrive at the effective shear force in the critical section One we have once we have arrived at the critical section. So, V e is given by equal to 350 minus P into B naught into L naught. So, where 350 is the load coming on the column number 2 that is F 2 and P is the pressure acting at the critical section the pressure that is net upward soil pressure multiplied by the area. So, the force coming down and the pressure going up. So, the difference is what is creating the shear failure. So, hence this is the difference. So, it is the effective shear acting on the critical section is 350 minus of 122.28 into 0.4 into 0.47 is what is the area. So, hence the effective shear is 300 and 27.01 kilo Newton acting upwards. So, this is the effective shear force that is disturbing the stability under shear criteria. So, once if you have identified the magnitude of effective shear force acting on the two way direction, the nominal shear stress at that particular critical section is given as tau v prime tau v prime which is equal to v e effective shear force divided by 2 times of the dimension b naught plus l naught into d. So, where this is the area of the critical section. So, area is nothing but the perimeter perimeter is 2 times of b naught into l naught that is 1 2, 3 and 4 is the perimeter multiplied by the depth perpendicular to this board is the critical section which is under failure. So, hence with this equation we have defined what is the value of tau v prime that is nominal shear stress at this particular selected critical section which is leading to 110.551 kilo Newton per meter square. So, now comparing this with the design shear stress in two way direction, we need to ascertain whether it is safe or unsafe for the safety of the concrete under shear stresses. So, now let us see how to calculate the design shear stress. So, the design shear stress which is at the critical section is given by the equation which is equal to K s by tau c prime as per I s 456, where K s is a constant for the shear which is obtained from the equation K s is equal to 0 0.5 plus beta c, where beta is again the constant of the concrete where it depends on the size of the column where exactly the critical section is going to occur. And ultimately this k s should not be greater than or equal to 1, it has to be lesser than 1. 
So now beta c is the dimensional parameter constant of the concrete. So which is equal to the short side of the column dimension divided by the long side of the column dimension that is given by 230 by 300 millimeters which is working out to be 0 0.76. So hence at no case it should be lesser than or equal to 1. So therefore Ks is taken as equal to 1. So now with this we can arrive at the design shear stress at the critical section which is equal to 1 times of tau C prime where tau C prime is equal to 0.25 root of FCK as per IS456. So therefore, the final design calculated value of the nominal, sorry, design shear stress at critical section tau C prime is equal to 0.968 Newton per mm square. So now this is compared with the nominal shear stress value in the two way direction that is 1.105 Newton per mm square. So since the nominal strength is greater than the actual strength of the concrete that is 0 0.968 now it is not safe. The concrete can fail because the concrete strength is only 0 0.968 Newton per millimeter square whereas the stresses developed due to the applied forces for the given dimensions and reinforcement is 1.105 which is greater than 0 0.968 so therefore it is not safe in two way shear. So hence we conclude that it is unsafe because 1.105 is greater than 0.968. Rather than if you want to make that as safe, then this value should be greater than 1.105. So with this conclusion, so now we see that the design is not safe except other parameters. So it is safe in bending, it is safe in one way shear, but it is not safe in two way shear. So therefore, we have to revise the design such that it will be safe even for two-way shear. So how to make it safe in two-way shear? Because we have already, all the way we have done with the safe design calculations until this. So only here we have been not able to qualify for the safety requirements for the shear. So now looking into the equations, what exactly it is creating for 0 0.968 kilonewton per newton, sorry newton per millimeter square so d is critical so d is critical so what is that this is what it is so hence we can reverse calculation and determine what is the d required for equating 0 0.968 to 1.11 that is nominal shear stress value. So this is the simplest way we can do it or we can increase the depth from 170 to 200. So now here this is what we have been done just increasing it by 50 millimeters. So earlier the de effective design depth required is was less than 170 and we have rounded off to 170. So now because of the two way shear not being safe we are just increasing depth from 120, 170 to 200 millimeters and see what exactly is the design shear strength of concrete sorry nominal shear strength of concrete working out to be. So now the nominal shear strength of concrete is working out to be 0 0.879 Newton per mm square. So which is lesser than tau C prime value. So yes tau C prime value is 0 0.968. So therefore this is greater than the nominal shear stress in 
punching shear. So hence now we have arrived at a situation where it can be safe without reinforcement even in two way shear. So with this we conclude that by increasing the depth from 170 to 200 as a effective and overall depth increasing from 200 to 250 millimeters. So we have the safety requirement being achieved for the said design conclusions. So with this we conclude the design check for two-way shear. Okay, having uh, done with the check for the shear, that is a two-way shear check. So we have concluded that the revised depth, 200 millimeters, as well as the overall uh, depth of 250 millimeters, is sufficient enough to satisfy the check for the two-way shear, that is punching shear. So with this we proceed with further the revised depth of effective being 200 and the overall being 250 millimeters. So the next is to recalculate the reinforcement which is essentially required for the revised depth of 200 and 250 as usual. So now using the same equation which we have used it earlier from IS 456 where for equating MU1 to MU limit. So we have calculated or arrived at the revised reinforcement required for AST1 as 550 millimeter square. So that is exactly at this location. So this is 550 millimeter square based on the revised depth, effective depth of D is equal to 200 meters, 200 millimeters. So which is exactly having the effect in this equation. So hence, for this calculated EST1 required. So let us calculate the bars which is expressed in terms of spacing. So which is given by the equation the spacing of 12 mm millimeter dia bar. So I am considering here as 12 millimeter diameter bars which is which is having an single area of one single bar is 113 millimeter square. So hence the spacing equation is the spacing for 12 mm dia bar for the required 550 millimeter square is equal to area of one single reinforcement divided by AST that is 550 millimeter square multiplied by the width for which we have been used to calculate MU1. So hence with this equation we have arrived at the spacing of 12 at 250 mm center to center which is actually been rounded off to 250. But in actual practice by using the equation this will work out to be greater than 250 mm center to center so roughly around 300 plus. So with this we have concluded that the rounded off dimension for the spacing of 12 mm dia at location AST1 is 250 millimeter center to center. So hence for this provided spacing of 12 mm dia bars at 250 millimeter center to center, we achieve that the AST that is being provided by using this spacing will be 723 mm square. So which is much much greater than the minimum required based on the moment criteria. So hence for this 723 mm square the percentage of steel that is provided at this particular zone that is exactly below this 280 kilonewton force is 
0.18 percent each. So, hence this reinforcement is working out to be 0.18 percentage which is sufficient enough to take care of both bending as well as shear in one way as well as shear in two way. So, next is similarly we can also calculate we should also calculate the reinforcement for the zone AST 2 as well as the reinforcement for AST 3. So, let us see in the similar fashion what could be our AST 2 required and what is AST 2 provided. So, now for the revised depth, so AST 2 required for zone 2 that is here exactly at the location column number B, second column where 350 kilo Newton force is acting exactly on column number 2. So, the AST 2 required is 1188 millimeter square based on the moment equation which is as per IS 456. So, now again using 12 mm dia toss steel bar, it is worked out at 150 mm center to center is has been taken care for rounding off the spacing and with this spacing the AST 2 which has been provided is 1205 millimeter square which is greater than what is required for the bending criteria. So, hence with this area of reinforcement and the number of bars sorry the spacing of bars being 12 at 150 mm center to center the percentage of steel that is achieved at zone 2 is 0 0.30 percentage. Similarly, for zone 3 that is AST 3, let us see what is the numbers that we have been arrived at based on the equation. So, hence at AST 3 we have requirement of 1421 mm square based on the moment equation for the particular maximum bending moment that we have been arrived at in our analysis. So, hence based on the bending criteria the reinforcement required is 1421 millimeter square. So, hence again assuming the same diameter of 12 mm dia bars the spacing required is rounded off to 120 mm center to center. So, which leads to 1507 mm square area of reinforcement that is possible with 12 mm dia bars at 120 mm center to center. So, with this the percentage of steel that is been provided will work out to 0 0.37 percentage. So, hence with this revised depth of from 170 to 200 and the overall depth being 250 millimeters. So, it has been recalculated the required structural steel reinforcing bar in terms of the area and in terms of the bars with the spacing and in terms of the percentage of steel that is being expressed. So, along with this we should also see that the minimum reinforcement is also being provided for the slab that is combined footing slab in terms of the area of reinforcement which has been not provided as the main reinforcement. So, these particular zones represents in the drawing is the main reinforcement area. So, the remaining area can be of minimum percentage of steel minimum steel that has to be provided based on based on minimum criteria. So, hence so these bars which has been continued 
is representing the AST minimum, AST minimum. Similarly, here it is AST minimum, AST minimum. Again, this particular zone where the slab is going to hog, it will take it care by the AST3, whereas the bottom space which has been not shown as the continuous bar is filled up with AST minimum. So, this is again AST minimum. So, with this the longitudinal reinforcement which covers the calculation of main reinforcement and the remaining portion with respect to the AST minimum is been complete in full terms of including the checking for two way shear and one way shear. Similarly, in the other direction that is on the transverse direction based on the revised depth of 250 millimeters, we need to calculate the revised AST required which is 958 mm square based on the bending criteria. So, for this required 958 millimeter square assuming the same 12 mm dia bars it is been rounded off to 110 mm center to center as the spacing which yields AST as 1027 millimeter square. So, hence with this data the PT provided in the transverse direction of the combined footing is working out to be 0 0.41 percentage. So, hence as in the transverse direction the slab is going to bend as the upward direction that means the tension is in the bottom. So, hence this 12 mm at 110 mm to center to center is exactly over here. So, this is AST in transverse direction, which exactly is opposite to the other longitudinal direction. So, with this we conclude the reinforcement design criteria for both in lateral as well as longitudinal direction where this can be or maybe it should be AST minimum. So, with this the entire design process of slab type combined footing is coming to an end. So, thus we have been established the design calculations through in depth knowledge of how to understand the bending criteria as well as the shear criteria. So, with this we conclude the design of slab type combined footing. Thank you.